Hi, this is Tanya. I'm in Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, I am not in Kingston, Jamaica. It is something that I have said so many times that it's like it's recorded in my brain, but I'm in Jamaica and I'm in the country and I won't tell you which one, but it is just, it's an amazing place to be. I mean, you can hear the wind going through the trees. I'm under a Nasberry tree. There are palm trees. There are coconut trees. There is an Aki tree, pear tree. I'm just loving where I'm at in the country. And today I just wanted to experience nature, be grateful, be thankful, and also to share with you something that's on my heart today, right? So I recognized this week something about self-limiting beliefs. Now I'm doing a life on challenge, a life on fire challenge on Facebook. I was also listening to Cindy Trim, and of course, I have lived a life of helping to motivate others and occasionally I find myself in a slump but because of my faith in God and the belief that I have a purpose-driven life every time I go into the slump there's always some fire to get me back up you know but this week I was thinking about it and I said you know we have to detox not only from our own self-limiting beliefs but the limits we place on others and so let me explain recently i saw a photo of a beautiful 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 woman and this is someone i've known from we were children and that person back in the past would have made some decisions that were not healthy decisions, you know? And the, it was a, something that was memorable. So it was a negative experience that happened to the person or they chose to do. It was memorable, the information got out. And so more of us as children and people in the community knew about it. Of course, life continues. We move on, we go our separate ways, we live our lives, we make additional mistakes, but we also have a lot of successes and we're transformed, we're no longer children. And we have careers and families and so on. But I realized every time I saw a picture of the individual, the past mistake that this person made would always be the way in which I remember them. And it happened once and it happened twice and it happened thrice. And then I thankfully, thanks be to God, recognize that, hello, you also have to detox yourself from other people's past. So some of us may have family members and friends who have made mistakes and we're holding it against them and they're moving on with their lives or trying to move on but we're not letting them go we're we're just we we have them stuck in that moment of mistake and it's unfair to them and it's unfair to you that means I was being unfair to myself because guess what? I would have also gone on and made mistakes. You know, how would I feel if on my journey, I'm having a really great day, really wonderful day. And I see someone from my past and the first thing they do is say, you remember when you made that mistake? I wouldn't feel good. And so what I did, I realize whenever I'm doing these things, I'm always putting my hand on my face. I'm going to try to keep my hand out of my face for the rest of this. So I realize that it's important to detox your mental space, not only from your mistakes, not only from your past, 
but also from the mistakes of others and the, the past that you have them stuck in. So it's time to release it. Recognize that that male is a man, that woman is no longer a girl, and it's unfair to hold their past so much against them that every time you see their no, all you can do is remember their past. It's detox time. And detoxing is so important because can you imagine what would happen if you lived still as an adult in your childhood home, but you've never taken anything out of your closet and thrown it away? You've never thrown away a pair of shoes. You've never thrown away a dress, even if it can't fit you anymore. You've never thrown away a pants, even though the waist is tight. You've never just detox. You keep adding more and more stuff how what kind of state would that closet be in similarly our brain is like that closet or like a computer and if you have used up the drive and the computer is still important or functional you have to go in and clear the files clear the old pictures the spam emails, the drafts that are no longer important and you didn't even know that drafts were there from way back when. You just have to go into spring cleaning mode, clean out yourself, clean your mind, clean your body, clean out your closet of, of the memories of other people and what they did and what they didn't do and all of that. Imagine what would happen after that detox. After that, cleaning out of the worms. Ooh, child. <laughs> Am I speaking to anybody but myself today? Right? I think this is the first time I'm doing a Facebook Live, but I, I felt so passionate about it. The other thing is that where is passion in your life right now? What level of passion? Are you experiencing in your life? I asked my husband that this morning and he said, well, passion for different things are at different levels. So question, on an average, where is your passion level at? Now, why is this important? There are many people who grew up maybe in poverty or with parents who didn't pay them a lot of attention and they had huge desires as children. They were energized, they always wanted something. Maybe when it was Christmas, they were expecting Santa to come through the chimney. They were expecting him to come with their bicycle or their Xbox or whatever, and they just never got anything. So, there's a group of persons who have lost their passion because they've, they're not used to getting anything. So when you say to them, oh my God, I see you. They're like, so your passion level for them is like at a 10. And their passion level for themselves is like at a 2. And that is because so many people, maybe from when they were children, promised them so many things but never delivered that they have lost all kind, they've lost expectation, they've lost their hope, they've lost their faith, they're, they are lukewarm. So I had to examine myself too, because you know what the Bible says. If you are lukewarm, your time is up. There is no use for you. If you're cold, life can put some fire under you some friends God can put some fire under you and heat you up and get you running again and if you're hot well you are on the way and you are achieving but if you're lukewarm hmm, is anything gonna get you pumped up so it's important to just detox again where's your passion level at is it four is it two is it one? Is it zero? You want to get that passion level up to a 10. You want to have expectations again. You want to write a vision. You want to dream. You want to pray. You want to 
Be hopeful for other people. Hopeful for yourself. <laughs> I just had to get that all out of me this morning because it's my thought process. And I know that as it goes through my thought, it doesn't only serve me, it serves others. So this morning, I've detoxed my brain from thoughts that are not serving me and it's not serving others. As a man think it, it says in his heart, but we know that a mind and a heart is connected. So is he. I'm not talking about perfection because none of us are perfect. But you know what? The third thing that I'd like to talk about, I talked about detoxing the mind and about your passion level. But the third and final thing that I want to talk about is how do you move forward? And what do you want? And a lot of times, if you ask somebody what they want, they will spend a good deal of time telling you what they don't want. Did I ask you about what you don't want? I said, what do you want? And so it's very important to focus in mentally, zone in, even if you have to write it down, what do you want? Don't tell me what kind of job you don't want. Tell me what kind of job you want. Don't tell me what kind of woman you don't want in your life. Tell me what kind of woman you do want. Don't tell me what kind of man you don't want. Tell me what you want. Because as a man think it, so is he. But also, the things that are going around in your mind is what you attract. So if you say, I don't want, guess what? hand and face, <laughs> more than likely you're going to get what you said you didn't want because that's what you focused on. So I'm Tanya. I'm in Jamaica. I believe that part of my divine purpose is to motivate other people to encourage them. I also have a natural skincare business. And so I've told you what I have. Do I have everything? No. But today, the focus is not on what I don't have. The focus is what I have. So I've come unfiltered, no makeup, real and raw to say to you, this is the year to live your dreams and to zone in on what you have and to use what you have to make your life and existence better. So, having listened to me for 13 minutes, I appreciate that very much. What touched you? What impacted you? Let me know because you know what? A workman is worthy of his wages. And so therefore, my wage from you today is to let me know how this has impacted you. Have an awesome day. I'm going back to the wind. I'm going back to the trees. I'm going back to sit and to breathe in the wonders of God and to let out and detox from all the negatives. Have a peaceful day. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.